Good evening. I'm your show host, Osiris Munir, for 15 minutes to show. We are again on our second show of the quarantine of COVID-19. And so, the first show we did was around two rappers where our show is going to show the similarities between two artists sometimes painters, singers, we are in front of the camera, behind the camera, but people of notoriety, you would know of them. So last time we talked our first show, we talked about the one and only Curtis Blow, who was the first recorded rap artist, and then we swung into the godfather of spoken word, Mr. Gil Scott Heron. Now, today, we'll talk about the similarities of makeup artists the famous Sonia Lee from Seoul, Korea, and the one and only Lee Krasna, the uh, abstract expressionist from New York, and the comparability. So, Miss Sonia, Sonia, Sonia Lee, born and raised in Seoul, Korea. She studied art and fashion, and I guess one day she was hanging out with her teacher there. And, her teacher thought that she should transition into makeup and become a makeup artist because she had an eye for beauty, so that she did. And the two companies that influenced her coming into LA were called Amore and Juden Hawk. And thus her journey began. When she got to LA, of course her work was so good that exclusive artist management decided to rep her. She references Darren, Claire, Andy, Ally, Matt, and Kim as the team that encourages her, keeps her motivated to keep those nice, handsome faces coming and to keep things the way they're supposed to be when it comes to doing a great job at makeup. Now, if you've never heard, there are some very fam famous makeup artists and Sonia happens to be one of them. She's not only a makeup artist, she is specializes in men's grooming. She's a stylist as well and owes her calmness and her, her intense passion for what she does to her Korean meditation teacher, Il Chi Lee, who is, uh, I think he started, I believe that he started a program in El Salvador, and he was able to teach the kids there from very poor and underprivileged neighborhoods how to do art and how to paint and do music and everything that we take for granted here in the United States and the program has been amazing. And Sonia states that she wants to be like him. And if you've seen the Bruce Lee story, you know that fine Jason Scott Lee? One reason that he is fine other than the great good fortune of having some nice looking parents is that Sonia Lee did the makeup for him and uh, she is just amazing at what she does. Now, before we get off the subject of Sonia Lee, I just want to let you know that Sonia is represented by Exclusive Artist Management and their website is www.eamanagementmgmt.com. So don't forget, she also has an IG called Sonia Lee Artistry. You can look her up on it and I think you'll love what she does. Now one reason um, Sonia is really good and what ties in makeup and painting is like our other artist who's a painter, the very famous Lee Krasner, um, abstract expressionist and she was very famous for doing collage as well, uh, is that they both use color tone they have a palette when Sonia does her stuff she takes one side of the face she matches color of eyes color, color of skin uh, you know what side of the face has shadow what side of the face has more tone color and she matches this to the different colors on her color palette for makeup just like the famous Lee Krasner does the same thing. This is a piece of my art and I brought it as a reference, thus the painted face on one side and you'll see that on the other side I have makeup. Just to show that each has to have an eye to be able to go in there, match those things and 
present them to you in a very pleasing manner so that you will purchase a magazine that has Sonia's name on it and her client and you will purchase a piece of painting or art that may be anyone's art but it will drive you and motivate you to do so. so before we leave again those are the similarities and in a moment we'll be back and we'll be talking about Miss Lee Krauser now Sonia is a Leo and she's in entertainment she works with celebrities how about that if it's the sign of Leo which rules Rigo proud you know everything is fun outgoing entertainment and very very attractive and everyone as we know loves to bask in the sun okay hey we're back so I get to talk about one of my very famous painters we're using her as an example to women her name is Miss Lena Krasner, outside of her family, she was known as the Nora Krasner, the famous Lee Krasner, wife to the very even more famous Jackson Pollock. Lee was born on October 27. She was a Scorpio baby. And let me tell you, Miss Thing had a lot of stuff to go through. First of all, she married Jackson Pollock. And the second, she actually put her own career aside. She was born and daughter of Chain Weiss and Joseph Krasner, who were uh, Russian Jewish immigrants from, I believe the name of the town was Shikiv, a Jewish community in what is now known as the Ukraine. The couple fled to the United States to escape the anti-Semitism and Rus uh, Russo-Japanese War. Chain changed her name to Anna when she arrived in the free country of the U.S. and Lee was the fourth of five children including her sister Ruth and the only one to be born in the United States. So check this out, Krasner was very influenced by the opening of the Museum of Modern Art in 1929. Don't forget she was born in 1907. She was very affected by post-impressionism and kind of grew critical of the um, academic notions of those times. She had learned at the National Academy in the 30s. She began studying modern art through learning the components of composition, much like figurative studies. She started taking classes from Hans Hoffman in 1937, which modernized her approach to the nude and still life. He emphasized like two-dimensional type sketches and stuff like that that I can imagine her being a Scorpio found rather boring. You know, they like to dig very deep into things and they become very passionate and they want to know absolutely the bottom line of what makes things tick. So throughout her classes with Hoffman, she worked kind of in an advanced style of, you know, of her art and her uh, her figure and style. So at uh, Cubism was one of the things that she studied. It was a style known as Neo-Cubism. She, in her early days, supported herself as a waitress, but eventually had to quit because at the time that she was she was establishing herself, she was also, was the time of the Great Depression. In order to continue to provide for herself, she joined the Works Progress Administration Federal Art Project in 1935, working in the mural division, check that out, as an assist assistant to Max Spivak. Her job, check this, was to enlarge other artists' designs for large-scale public murals. And murals were created very easily at that time, and they were understood by the general public much more than the abstract expressionist kind of mood and intuition that Krasner wanted to do. She, while, you know, she loved being employed, she was really dissatisfied at the kind of things that she was doing in it, especially with figurative images and figurative artists. So throughout the late 30s and the 40s, um, she created gouache sketches just to, you know, in the hopes of the day she would be doing a abstract a mural. So as soon as one of her pro proposals was approved by the WNYC radio station, I believe they were in Washington, the Works Progress Administration had turned into a full war. In other words, 
She couldn't do anything painting wise unless it had to do with war. So what was a girl to do? So Crafts continued working for them by creating collages for war efforts, which were eventually displayed in the windows of 19 department stores in Brooklyn, Manhattan. Ain't that something? She was intensely, keyword Scorpio, intensively involved with the artist union during her employment with the WPA. One of the reasons that she quit was that she realized at the time that the communists were taking over. So, by being a part of the organization, she was able to meet more artists in the city and enlarge her network. So after she quit, she joined in 1940, the American Abstract Artists, and get, check this out, she was a member, and she typically exhibited Cubist still life stuff. She met future people you've heard of, expressionist, badass, Willem de Kunick, R. Schill Gorky, Franz Klein, Adolf Gottlieb, Marth Rocco, Barnett Newman, Clifford Steele, Bradley Walker Tomlin, just in the, I mean, everybody that was anybody was hanging out there. And there Miss Krasner found herself. Much to her surprise, and I'm sure her liking at the same time, after she married Jackson Pollock, her whole theme changed. After she saw his work, she knew that not only was he Mr. Badass, she was Miss Badass right after him because she was one of the few women artists at that time. I don't think you understand. Let me say it again. She was one of the few female artists at the time that the men respected. Remember, if you saw the movie Jackson Pollock, even an artist, he makes re in the movie, he makes reference to her being, he said, that's a damn good painting for a woman artist. That's a damn good painting, he makes expression to her in that particular movie, Jackson Pollock. So, as she continues, she would normally, don't forget that collage was one of the things that she was most famously known for, up until she got really heavily into Cubism and then eventually abstract expressionism. She was doing collages, so she would often take her own paintings and rip them up and make pieces, like mosaic pieces, so she could do collage work. So unfortunately, by the time she passed away in the 80s, there weren't a lot of her pieces left. Also, she must have had some Virgo or something in her and probably just being a perfectionist. And also Scorpios, they, you know, they do like to you know, have things be correct and um, them to be the way they should be. And so she was very critical by nature. So, as I said, for those of you that like astrology, when do we come on and we do our little thing of comparing people of notoriety and people that are famous worldwide, we will talk a little bit about sun sign, a little bit about astrology, just to let you know. And again, for those of you that are really interested in astrology, please, you can go on to things like cafeastrology.com. You can find anything about astrology and delve very deeply. It is a very intense subject, just as we talk about, again, to talk about Sonia Lee and um, the comparison of the fabulous Lee Krasner and their techniques, again, in reference to my painting, we are talking about color tone, putting things together, matching the colors so they're pleasing to the eye, even having the eye, directing the eye in some cases, depending on what you're looking at. And Lee Krasner was very famous for doing very bold things. And I think that um, after that, you know, and again, Scorpios have intense, uh, they can be an intense pain sometimes inside, but they're always in a bottle of the Phoenix rising from ashes and dust to beauty, harmony, and love so much for Miss Lee Krasner. So next time, don't forget to check us out on www.onkentertainment1.net. That's the word one, O-N-E. I also have a YouTube channel called 15 Minutes to Show. You know you want to. And then also I have on IG, Facebook as well, but IG more so. I'm under Osiris, O-S-I-R-I-S, and the moon here, M-U and I are. On Entertainment, I also have something called uh, a little bit of my art on there that you will hopefully 
enjoy. And we'll see you next time. And as always, we'd like to bring you informative, entertaining stuff. And I'll try to keep you pleased and teased just a little bit while we go through our COVID-19 quarantine. Talk to you later. Bye.